Disulfiram is a medication that was first synthesized in 1881. In 1951, it was approved by the FDA as a treatment for alcoholism under the brand name Antabuse. Today we're going to talk about how this medication, Disulfiram, has been repurposed for the treatment of, of Lyme disease. So initially, the medication Disulfiram, again used as a treatment for alcoholism, was was effective or is effective in that it blocks the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase. So when someone drinks alcohol, it causes a buildup of aldehydes and that buildup of aldehydes makes you feel quite sick. So it's meant to be a deterrent for someone who has issues with alcohol and wanted something that would help them to not drink alcohol. But over the years, we have found that disulfiram has many other properties as well. We have found it to have antimicrobial properties. It can kill bacteria. It has antiparasitic properties. It has anti-cancer properties. So there are a lot of things that potentially that this medication can do. The exact mechanism is not fully understood as to how it does these things. It's thought that it can uh, affect other enzymes that are necessary for the, for instance, in this case with Lyme disease, where, that there's, it may actually inhibit an enzyme in the bacteria, causing that bacteria to, to die. And what they found is that it causes the, the walls of the bacteria to become very misshapen. So some of the cells that actually survived the test still had very misshapen cell walls which would make them not viable as well. And so there's, there's some proposed mechanisms, but not completely understood. As far as what we know in regard to how, how effective this is, so let's go back to just a, a couple of studies that were done. The first study was in 2016, and this was done at Stanford, where they, they did a test uh, of Lyme treatment with disulfiram, compared to a number of different antibiotics. And they, they really tested a number of different medications. And in this particular study, disulfiram was the most effective treatment in killing the bacteria. And not only did it kill the active bacteria, but it also killed some of the persistent bacteria, the ones that were more dormant. So it really showed some great activity against Lyme disease. Now, not that, that much later, as, as patients started to see this particular study, there was a doctor, Dr. Kenneth Ligner, who had a patient that basically said, Doc, why don't we try this? You know, there's a study that shows it can be effective. And his personal experience was fantastic. You know, his first two or three patients that he had really responded well to disulfiram. And these are patients who had been dealing with Lyme disease for some time, using all of the other novel treatments that we knew of at the time. So we really felt like there was something here. Now let's fast forward here to a, a study that was done in 2020 by Dr. Kenneth Ligner and, and some others. This was actually a three-year retrospective study on those who had had treatment for Lyme disease with disulfiram over a period of, uh, from 2017 to 2020. There were a total of 71 patients that were treated. There were patients that were able to get up to a higher dose of disulfiram and those who had a harder time with it and stayed in, in a lower dose range. And they were able to compare some of the results and the experiences. And what they found is that those who were able to do a full course in their, what they considered a full course was somewhere between uh, six to 12 weeks at the high dose. And the high dose is considered four to six milligrams per kilogram. Those particular patients found that they they received the best results and, and received what was called or um, felt what was called enduring remission. So they, they were not having symptoms of Lyme disease or had much less symptoms of Lyme disease after this treatment. And this continued for a good six month period. And so it was really through these studies that we have seen that this is a good and a potent option for those who are treating chronic Lyme disease. There are some providers who have even used it as a first line therapy rather than something that we use for the more persistent cases after we've either failed antibiotics or other treatments. So at, at this point, we don't have a specific protocol, but we do have some, some basic guidelines that we like to follow 
that kind of keep us all in the same boat. So I wanted to share with you a little bit of the guidelines of the treatment uh, and also just some of the things to watch for as far as what are the risks and benefits of, of treatment with disulfiram and, and give you some of my personal experiences here as well. So first of all, like I mentioned, the, the goal with disulfiram is to get to what we consider high dose therapy. And, and that's gonna be in anywhere between four to six milligrams per kilogram. On average, that's somewhere between 250 to 500 milligrams a day. However, we start much lower than that because the medication has been shown just clinically to cause some significant Herxheimer reactions. Plus, there are some potential side effects that we'll talk about. And so starting at a lower dose tends to really make it a lot more uh, tolerable. And, and also it's a very long acting medication. So it's something that once you take it, it will stay in your system for up to two weeks. And so in order to get to that, that higher dose, we make a slow gradual progression, slow gradual titration upward. Starting anywhere from, in some cases I've started as low as 30 milligrams a day or 30 milligrams every other day even, up to somewhere in the 60 milligram range. So it does take a little bit of time to get up to that, that full dose. So that's the goal. Now, again, not every patient can tolerate the full dose and there are some thoughts out there and some clinical experience out there that shows that even at a lower dose, it may be helpful taken for a longer period of time. And in fact, those lower doses, of course, are gonna make it so that the side effect risk is much less. So what are some of the potential risks? What are some of the side effects? I would say, and again, this is also confirmed in the clinical study, that the most common side effect from disulfiram is fatigue. So that's an issue, and certainly if it becomes disabling, then that can make it a difficult medication to take at a higher dose. I clinically have found that some patients can tolerate it up to a certain point, and then once we get over that, that point, it tends to be more problematic. I did have a particular patient that was just maybe 60 milligrams shy of the dose that we were shooting for. Anytime we bumped it up to that dose, it just made them so wiped out and tired. But if we kept, kept it at the slightly lower dose, they were fine. And in fact, it really made a big difference for them. So, so that's one of the bigger side effects that we see. The other thing clinically that I've seen is that if you take disulfiram at night, it tends to be a little bit better. If we can take it just at night, it, it helps us, it may actually help us sleep, but it doesn't always take away the fatigue during the day. Sometimes actually splitting it up to taking it two or three times a day can be more beneficial for certain patients. Using an enteric coated capsule to take the medication can also be helpful for certain patients as well. So that's, those are some of the ways which we try to work with that and try to make it so that they can be tolerated and not cause too much fatigue. The other thing that we see is we do sometimes see some peripheral neuropathy. And this is a, an important one to be careful about because neuropathy, if left unchecked for a long enough period of time, could potentially become permanent. So anytime someone is dealing with neuropathy on disulfiram, we, we really watch that closely and a lot of times we'll, we'll come down or come off the medication because of it. Anytime I have a patient on disulfiram, I always recommend taking the supplement acetyl L-carnitine along with that. Acetyl L-carnitine is neuroprotective and neuroregenerative so that it can really help to, to prevent neuropathy. And I've found it to be very helpful in those cases. The average dose for that is about 1500 milligrams a day while taking disulfiram. The other one that we see um, on, on occasion is it can cause some psychiatric symptoms. And psychiatric symptoms can be anything ranging from uh, something mild to actually to episodes of psychosis. And it's not something we see often, but it is something that we've seen. And so something you gotta be really careful about and watch closely as well. And also it does tend to be dose related for most patients. So as we're going up slowly, if there is any issues that sound, seem like they're kind of creeping in there, we can back off. So those are just some, some important things to, to watch. And probably the, uh, the main thing too, just to keep in mind as well, is that when you're on disulfiram, you absolutely cannot drink any alcohol or have anything with alcohol in it as it will cause you to feel quite ill and can be 
pretty problematic in, in cases that if we if we have a lot of alcohol. So there's also been some reports where people have had issues with anything fermented, even things like vinegar, salad dressings. And clinically speaking, I've seen patients be okay on some of those things. And I, I typically recommend just to kind of stay away from them. But of course, sometimes people put some salad dressing on their salad and they forget, you know, and so, and then they realize they didn't have any issues with it. So, but I've also had patients who it's been super problematic with anything that has a little bit of alcohol, even topically, whether it be in a shampoo or be a hand sanitizer. So there's just a lot of those things you got to be aware of. The one other thing that I would say too, I guess if I were to add one more, would be watching liver function. So there again are some cases where liver can be a little bit problematic and it causes some elevation in liver enzymes. So we watch that closely. And again, it's one of those things that can be reversed quite easily by, by stopping the disulfiram or using something like milk thistle to help with the, those particular cases. So there, it's, it's certainly not benign, but when you compare it with something like an antibiotic, it's not gonna have the same gut side effects that the antibiotics do. And that's one of the, the big benefits of disulfiram and on top of that, it just seems to be a really good medication for a lot of patients. It does seem to be effective against Lyme and Babesia. Um, we have the studies we have show Lyme, but as far as clinical studies, we do believe that Babesia or clinical experience, we do believe Babesia is also affected by it. There may even be some effect on Bartonella with this. So it really is a good treatment option in a lot of cases can be combined with other treatment options. It doesn't have to be a solo treatment. So there are a lot of options and, and opportunity for this particular medication. So if you are thinking about this as a potential for you, or you are struggling with Lyme and maybe haven't heard of this before, I would recommend you talk to your doctor about it. Talk to your Lyme doctor about this as an option and, and consider it. This could be the option that you need.